So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to programming and hacking at the same time by first trying to hack a Wi-Fi network using commands manually and then we can automate that process using programming. Of course, we're not going to do that in real life. First of all, it's probably illegal unless if it's your own network. And second of all, um, it's a bit more complex in real life, right? So there is way more details in there. So I really, really recommend like even professionals learn a lot in gray hack and they practice and so on. But yeah, all right. So currently I'm on Windows. Uh, just to play this game though I usually use Fedora Linux and Linux is another operating system just like Windows though it's the one that most hackers well in fact probably all hackers use like the real ones <laughs> but uh, yeah alright so most actually uses uh, like it's called Kali Linux you know Kali Linux, this one right here. Others use Parrot even. These are like the more advanced Parrot. And some other people just uses any other distro. So basically there's multiple flavors of Linux uh, they're called distros, right? And each one is specialized in one thing or another. There's even people who like create their own thing using Arch Linux. So basically install literally everything and so on. Uh, but let's not go into details right here. Anyways, so you have here online mode and single player. Let's go to single player. And by the way, we're gonna use uh, to to like hack the Wi-Fi network. We're gonna use something called Aircrack NG. Now, of course, not this exact thing because we're not gonna do this in real life. But it's gonna be very similar to this tool. Uh, in real life pretty much so yeah now let's just delete delete and let's play this game All right so first thing first you get the boot terminal like and this is kind of similar to Linux when it's booting you know it's like it just shows you these logs these messages of what's happening to boot the system All right and then here I need to sign up go to Jacko Enigma password don't use a real password, please. But if you're in multiplayer, just use a secure one, but don't use your own, because these aren't stored securely. I just said... Okay, so right now it just booted. Great, so in fact, if you played for the second time, you're going to get a gift right here, which gives you a Wi-Fi network to access. But of course, we don't want to be that easy. <laughs> we want to go the hard path and actually hack it on our own. Uh, and yeah, so here we have these networks that we want to hack. So let's see how we could hack them. So here we have a terminal, right? So a terminal is basically where you could write some commands. So if I say... I don't know, LD, command not found. So if you write an invalid command, it just says command not found. And congratulations, you got your first error. And one thing for sure in terms of programmers and hackers, they don't treat errors as failures. They treat errors as actually a good sign because like the, 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 like the worst is actually the program not working, but you're not getting any errors. So you have to figure out what's wrong. But when you get an error, you realize what's wrong and you can fix it. Now, in our case, we can fix it using ls, let's say, or whatever other command. So here, ls stands for list. So it basically lists all the files inside the current directory. Now we are in the home directory. And the home directory contains desktop, downloads, config. This is pretty similar to the directories of Linux, but yeah. Now we could change our directory, we could go inside of it. It's like clicking on Windows on a folder, you know. So CD, change directory. Let's change directory to desktop, for example. And there we go. Now we could say ls, and this is what's inside of desktop. Now we could even give it some options to that command to even display more information to basically alter the or change the behavior of that command so I'm going to say ls-la and it would show way more details about the files as you can see it will show me the permissions per group per world and so on 
and then even this is a sim link but you don't really need to know all of this I'm just showing you what is possible right and this is the size and so on if you want to for example let's say remove this file right here we could say rm gift.txt and there you go now we have removed that gift.txt that what that contains like the credentials of that wi-fi that they gave us for free because we want to do it on our own of course if i want to go back to the parent directory i'm going to say cd dot dot and now i'm back and as you can see here it actually changed my path so before it was home the tilde basically stands for home slash desktop and this dollar sign means that i'm in a regular user account right not in root so because there is two users there is root user and there is like the regular users the regular users can't run all sorts of commands while the root can do all sorts of things they could even break the system they could like literally do rm slash and remove like destroy the whole system that's what the root could do um but anyways so now we need to hack a Wi-Fi. How we do it? Well, every single programmer and hacker starts with research and documentation and so on. So here we got a manual. Now, generally, you also have a manual, man, a command called man, where like if you want to know more about LS, you got to say man LS. Uh, and there you go, but here in the game, it doesn't show you that much information, but we have the manual right here, which is cool. All right, so we got uh, information about scripting, visual programs, terminal programs, and so on. Let's go inside terminal programs here, and let's go to basic commands. Now here you can find all the basic commands, CP for copy, and you can see the, how to use that. So here you need to pass the file, pass to copy, and so on. MV, PS, blah, 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 whatever. And here we got the network commands. Now these are the commands that we're gonna use to hack the Wi-Fi. Now the first thing first that we're gonna need is to know which Wi-Fi card we wanna use. Cause like your computer could have multiple Wi-Fi cards. Uh, right, so how are we going to do it? We're going to use air mode right here. So, and as you can see, usage air mode start stop net interface air mode start land zero. So, this command does actually multiple things used to enable monitor mode on wireless interfaces. It may also be used to go back from monitor mode to managed mode. Entering the air mode command without parameters will show okay. So, entering the air mode command without parameters will show the interface's status. It is the first step to be able to get the connection password of a Wi-Fi router. The network card needs to be activated in monitor mode. And you could even access the source code of how this tool works. Here we go. Uh, but anyways, let's go back here and let's list all the interfaces. So error moan. And there you go. This is all the cards that we have. We have one interface, LAN 0, with this chipset and monitor mode equal to false. Now, I want to use LAN 0. What should I do? Now, I need to basically list the Wi Fi's that are available to me. We're going to use EW list right here, which shows the list of Wi Fi networks visible from your computer. So let's say w EW list. And here you give it the net device that you want to use, which is in this case LAN 0. Okay, so we got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Wi Fi's, right? This is the power from it goes from zero to one to one hundred percent. Where one hundred percent to have the strongest signal, of course. Here the business ID. This is like the MAC address of that interface. Now the MAC address is basically like every single device, like your router, your computer, and your phone, and so on, have their own address that is you know identify the hardware they're using. And that's what is used, it is unique. Like every single device have a different BSSID. The SSID on the other hand is the name of the network. And this doesn't have to be different. It's just the one that shows up when you actually try to connect to a Wi-Fi. Okay, cool. Now that we have all the Wi-Fi's, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use AirPlay. Now AirPlay, requires a business ID and an SSID. We pass it through this parameters right here. 
right? So this used to inject frames on wireless interfaces. The primary function is to generate traffic for the later use in air crack for cracking the router keys. But yeah, all right. So how are we gonna use this? Let's see. So AirPlay dash B, and here you give it the business ID. Well, let's actually use this one, which have the best power. And then we paste dash E and we use the name. And well, we have our first error here. No Wi-Fi card found with monitor mode enabled. Now the thing is about this AirPlay, it actually needs to be able to read any packets in any Wi-Fi. Now, when your card is in managed mode instead of in monitor mode, what happens is that it only sees the packets, the data that is passing in the, the Wi-Fi, packets that is meant for it, and it filters everything else. But if you like make it monitor mode, what happens is that like you could literally sniff and see all the packets that are passing in the radio on the air because well, Wi-Fi works using radio signals and they're all around you in the air basically. So now when your card is in monitor mode, it can actually just pick up any signal on the air instead of just the signal that is meant for it. So it's like a spy essentially. So now we need to first of all make our Wi-Fi card in monitor mode. So let's actually do that. We use Airmone for that. We say Airmone start LAN zero. And now LAN zero is in monitor mode. Great. Now we could use our arrow keys, the up arrow key to go back in the history of commands that we have typed earlier, right? So I'm gonna type, like press the up arrow key again. And there we go, I'm back to this command. Let's rerun it. And now it's actually capturing the packets from the air of that specific network. Now, as you can see, we're gonna keep on capturing packets until we get at least 7,000 ACKs. It depends on the power or the, the string of the signal of the network, uh, but generally 7,000 could be enough if the signal is good. Now what's happening here in real life, because uh, this is very simplified here, but in real life what you do, like your, the hacker essentially spoofs his MAC address, the ones that we've seen as the business ID, like it just uses that business ID, right? And it makes it like its own, right? So it kind of essentially the clients think that the hacker is the router, okay? And then the hacker goes ahead and sends packets uh, to the clients to basically make the clients disconnect from the network, right? And so since the client sees that the business ID is the same as the router, they think the hacker is the actual router, right? So they just disconnect. And after they disconnect, they try to reconnect. And when they try to reconnect, now the hacker, what he does, because he's reading all the packets in the air, he captures the handshake, the four-way handshake that is used to negotiate a key with the router, between the router and the client, right? Because otherwise he wouldn't hear it. But like when he forces the the clients to like disconnect and then connect again he can actually capture those packets and then later on like he basically puts all those packets or ACKs acknowledgements in a file and then later on uh, he can crack he can brute force crack that uh, you know the password offline without having to connect with anybody so now since I've got already enough ACKs, like in fact, probably 7,000 was enough. So I'm gonna say Control C to stop the thing. Now, as you can see, a new file is in here. So if I say LS, as you can see, we got a file.cap here. 
which contains all the packets that we have captured, right? Now that we have got all these packets, we don't need the network anymore. So we could just uh, take air mode, stop LAN zero. We don't need to be in monitor mode anymore. Perfect, because we already got the packets here. Now that we're outside of the network, we were outside of that, we could just crack that offline. So air crack, and we're gonna give it the file. So let's see what we got here. Air crack, where is it? Here we go. Key crack in program, you give it the file that contains the packets. And from those packets that contains the handshake packets, it would go ahead and brute force using a list using a list of words and figure out the password. So as you can see, aircrackfile.cap, key found, Suzuki. Now we could copy this and put it here and basically uh, which one was it? Which one we used? Yeah, Pinatico. Okay, we can come here and we can say password and then connect. Uh, and there we go. Done. Okay, so this was it for the first part. In the second part, uh, in the next video, we're going to actually automate this whole task using code. So, see you later. Goodbye, everybody.